Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick, and I welcome you to this episode of the St. Jude Thaddeus Story. And in this episode, I want to talk about St. Jude, the Apostle to the Assyrians. Well, who are the Assyrians? In ancient times, we find accounts of the Assyrians in the Bible. It's one of the oldest uh, ancient empires. It's a militaristic empire that expanded from Mesopotamia and expanded into Israel and Judea and on into Egypt. Uh, and it was very militaristic uh, empire uh, and very advanced civilization for its time. And we find stories of the Assyrians in the Bible where they're presented in both a positive and in a negative light. Uh, it's interesting that the book of Jonah is about the Assyrians who are called the Ninevites because the capital of their, of their empire was Nineveh. And uh, it's a very important and powerful story of Jonah about God's not willing that any should perish, as it says in the New Testament, but all should come to repentance. So that's what the book of, uh, of, of Jonah is about, repentance and salvation. We also have the story of Nahum, and it's very interesting. Uh, I was able to go to the Nineveh Plains, the ancient Assyrian homeland, and uh, visit the tomb of uh, Nahum the prophet at the Assyrian village of al -Kush. So, uh, the Assyrians were defeated by the Babylonians, and uh, since that time, uh, they never had independence, but the Assyrian people have continued to exist to this day. Uh, and now you have, uh, well, the Assyrians are an Aramaic-speaking people. Their homeland is the Nineveh Plains, or Mesopotamia, and uh, they're Aramaic-speaking, which means they speak the language that it was spoken by Jesus Christ. So, the Aramaic language is not yet faded out, it's still spoken. Of course, they use it in their religious services. They use a dialect of Aramaic, very similar to the Aramaic Jesus spoke, called Syriac. And uh, among themselves, the Assyrians speak modern Assyrian Aramaic. So uh, the story of, of Thaddeus is the story of the Christianization of the Assyrian people. So as we know that Jesus and his apostles, they were Aramaic speakers. So in turn, uh, at, Thaddeus, or who they call in Aramaic, Mar Adai, was an Aramaic speaker, and he went to the Aramaic-speaking Assyrians and uh, communicated the gospel to them in the language of Jesus, which was their native language back then, as it is today. Uh, Eusebius, who's called the father of church history, records the story of St. Jude Thaddeus, uh, being sent by the Apostle Thomas to the eastern regions and arriving in the city of Edessa, uh, where he performed many miraculous cures and miracles. And uh, the reports of, of Mar Adai, or, or St. Jude Thaddeus, began to be spread about until they came to the attention of the king, King Abgar Ukama, or King Abgar the Black. And uh, he called St. Jude Thaddeus into his presence and uh, this is connected to the, the, the letter, uh, which was mentioned in an earlier program. King Abgar heard of, of Jesus. It mentions in the Gospel of Matthew, the fame of Jesus spread around through all of the Syrian regions, uh, which included, at that time, Edessa. Now, today, Edessa is in Turkey, but it's a part of Mesopotamia. And uh, it was a Christian city until... The Turks emptied it of Christians uh, through ethnic cleansing and genocide uh, during the Armenian uh, genocide of 1915. Uh, so many Assyrians fled to northern Iraq and, and uh, eastern Syria and western Iran, where we find a community of Assyrians till this very day. There are still uh, Assyrian communities or Aramaic-speaking communities uh, in uh, Turabdin in, uh, uh, in Turkey to this day. But, of course, uh, Turkey's a uh, radical Muslim country. Uh, so, this is an important ancient uh, kingdom, the kingdom of Edessa, which is ruled by King Abgar. And the story is that he heard of the miracle power of Jesus. He was afflicted by a terrible disease, and he sent a message asking that Jesus would come and heal him of the disease of which he suffered. And Jesus sent a reply, that a verbal reply, that... Uh, the hour had come for him to fulfill his destiny, but not to fear. Soon after his glorification, which meant his death and, and resurrection, he would send one of his apostles to come 
and uh, heal the king and bring life to him and to his people and bring the salvation message. So uh, this story is recorded in, in the writings of Eusebius and there's an ancient Assyrian account called the Doctrine or the Teaching of Adai. Uh, and there's other ancient sources that tell the story of uh, Thomas sending Thaddeus and uh, Marmari. So you have Mar Marthoma is Thomas, Mar Adai is Thaddeus, and Marmari is uh, Saint Mari, uh, and, and a disciple, fellow disciple with Thaddeus who carried the gospel to the Assyrian people. And uh, today, if you go to Assyrian church, they have, I think the Assyrian church, they use three, traditionally use three liturgies. Uh, and one of the three liturgies is the liturgy of Saint Mar, or Saint Thaddeus, Mar, Mar, uh, Mar Adai. And uh, it is the oldest uh, liturgy uh, that is in use today. There's not a, 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 a liturgy that's currently regularly used older than the, uh, the one that's traditionally ascribed to St. Jude Thaddeus himself. So it's very ancient, of course, it's in Aramaic, and it's still celebrated in the Assyrian church to this very day. And uh, something else that's important about the Assyrian people is that they uh, they carried the gospel message. Uh, they received the gospel message directly from the apostles, from two of the twelve and one of the seventy. Uh, some people argue that St. Thaddeus was actually one of the seventy. Uh, Jesus had the twelve apostles, and he had the seventy disciples that's mentioned in the gospel of Luke. And some people say that Thaddeus of Edessa was actually one of the seventy. But... Uh, the overwhelming and stronger tradition is that uh, Mar Adai is Thaddeus, and he's one of the twelve apostles. That's how it's traditionally understood uh, by the most ancient sources, even though there's some dispute about that. So, as the tradition has been received by the church, we have Saint Thomas, Saint Thaddeus, and Saint Mari, uh, who are all, however you cut it, they're all disciples and apostles of Jesus. So, uh, the Assyrian people directly received the gospel directly from Christ's own apostles who spoke the gospel to them in their own language, which they shared with Jesus. And then the Assyrian people carried the good news to the farthest reaches of the world. According to the ancient sources, Thomas, after preaching uh, in Parthia, which included the Assyrian region, he went on to India and he founded the, the, community, the Christian community there today. And I've been to the St. Thomas Christian community of, of uh, India. In fact, when I uh, usually they use their services in their, their language Malayalam, but uh, I happened to be there when they had the service in Aramaic uh, when I was visiting Mar Apram. Very I had a wonderful visit in India where I was ret retracing the steps of uh, the Apostle Thomas. Uh, so there's a thriving community of Christians in southern India, the St. Thomas Christians, and uh, there's still many of them still belong to the uh, Assyrian Church of the East. So if you uh, Back then, you had the Silk Road, and the Assyrians carried the gospel all the way across the Silk Road to China. And there's many uh, archaeological remains of churches across Central Asia, Mongolia, and China. Uh, but because of the Islamic warlord Tamerlane, uh, those communities perished, sadly. Or uh, in, in China, many of them were converted to Roman Catholicism. Uh, the communities that remain cut off from the Assyrian Church, the East, the, uh, the Catholic Church came in and, and uh, brought them into Catholicism. So it's possible that uh, the, the church in, in China waxed and waned uh, since it was founded by Assyrian Christians, but uh, it's likely that a, a Christian witness remained in China since uh, the missionary known in the Chinese monuments as Adopan brought the gospel uh, there until today. And the current patriarch of uh, the Assyrian Church of the East, when he was a bishop, was able, this is Mar Awa, when you pray for him, uh, he was able to visit China and uh, some of the old churches over there. So we need to, uh, I think that when we look at Christendom, this is the, the thing about the Assyrian uh, Church of the East, and, and like if you went and you studied church history, generally if you got a book on church history, until recently, it would have been a history of the church in Europe, and uh, historians ignored the contributions of the Eastern Christians, uh, the Coptic Christians in Egypt, uh, and the Assyrian Syriac churches. They just ignored them. They just uh, they mentioned them in early history, 
Uh, but once you had the rise of Islam, they just pretended that these communities no longer existed, even though they exist to this day. And even now, like I said, things are starting to get better. It's hard to find uh, books about the church history of the Coptic churches of, of Africa and the uh, Syriac churches of Asia. But that's starting to change. Now there's a uh, uh, now we have more inclusive uh, histories of Christianity, where the, the stories of the Coptic Christians uh, of Africa and the Aramaic Syriac Christians of Asia uh, are finally being told. And uh, these are communities that have not died out. There's still a large, vibrant community of Coptic Christians in, in Egypt. And I was just in Egypt visiting Coptic Christians a couple of years ago, and or actually last year, and uh, in, in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Uh, and there's still Assyrian communities in Lebanon, in Syria, Iraq, and Iran. And of course, you have a large diaspora community of Assyrian immigrants in America, Australia, and Europe as well. And of course, the same thing is true of the Coptic churches, uh, too. So, Jesus sent his disciples, he, he commanded them to go and take this gospel to the whole world. Uh, and that's what the, the apostles did, even in their own day reaching uh, as far as India. And of course, Peter took the gospel to, uh, to Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire. Uh, so, King Abgar, if this, the legends are true, uh, that would make the, the Assyrian people the oldest Christian people. Now, uh, the Armenians also claim to be the oldest Christian people uh, because they, they think that uh, even though King Abgar ruled over an Aramaic-speaking uh, city-state that uh, he had some kindred with the Armenians and uh, you know I don't deny that even though it's obviously that, obvious that uh, King Abgar was an Aram Aramaic speaker uh, and uh, the traditions are that after Thaddeus preached to the Assyrians um, he and Marai uh, evangelized the surrounding areas and shared the gospel with all the people around there including the, the Armenians. Of course, uh, people get confused. Aramaic is a Semitic language. The Armenians are an Indo-European people, uh, but they are also one of the uh, oldest communities of people who converted to the gospel at the preaching of, of uh, Thaddeus and Bartholomew. So, um, the story of, of St. Jude Thaddeus is inspirational, and if you want to learn more, I have my two books on the subject. Uh, the book entitled... Saint, the St. Jude Thaddeus storybook, uh, where I just tell the story as it's come down to us of St. Jude Thaddeus. And I also have the, uh, the book that goes along with the film project that I worked on with my brother Josiah called St. Jude Thaddeus and The Legend of the Shroud. Both of those books, I wrote them, I put them together, uh, but I think they're uh, very professional, engaging, and interesting, and educational. Uh, so I recommend that you buy both of them. And it's also, it makes a good gift. Uh, we need to learn, in, in this day and age, I mean, look what's happening to our country. We see crime and violence and hatred and division. Uh, and it's being stoked on by, you know, radical left-wing Marxist progressives who, uh, you know, Marxism is about conflict. It's a system of conflict. It's not about reconciliation. It's not about forgiveness. It's about us versus them and, and taking from others and controlling others and oppressing people. It's a system, Marxism is an evil system of oppression that's incompatible with the gospel taught by Jesus Christ. And that's why we see these people spreading hatred and, and division. Uh, but we have a better message. We have the good news of Jesus Christ that uh, God loves us. And he loves all people. And uh, even people that, that are against us, like, you know, radical Muslims, uh, we oppose false teachings, but we love people. If it be the false teachings of radical Islam or the false teachings of Karl Marx and his minions, uh, we oppose and we that and we stand on the truth. And what is the truth? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I was thinking today about how we have the four Gospels and Mark focuses on what Jesus did. Matthew and Luke focus on the teachings of Jesus about love, mercy, compassion, and forgiveness, and how to live a, a, a life worth living, a life of compassion, mercy, and kindness. The ethical and moral teachings of Jesus is the focus of the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of John is about uh, the person of Jesus Christ, and it's, more, it's mostly about 
experiencing God as Father through knowing Jesus Christ. Now, what Jesus did is important. What Jesus said and taught is important. But who Jesus is as the Son of God is also important. And that's why the Lord, through the, the apostles, gave us this important message through his 12 apostles, which included Thaddeus, uh, who transmitted this message to us today, a message that we desperately need to stand up for truth, to love, but also to oppose error, and to reach out and forgive us in passion, and uh, try to establish freedom for all people. Because Jesus said that he has come that we could have life abundantly. And it says, whom the Son of Man, that's Barnasha in Aramaic, uh, this, he's, he's the Son of Man, which means back then in Aramaic, and if you look in the book of the Aramaic book of Daniel and the Aramaic book of Enoch, uh, the Son of Man was a, a messianic term. It means the Redeemer, the Savior of all mankind. And uh, who the Son of Man sets free, Jesus said, is free indeed. And that's what we need to do is to preach liberty and freedom and equality for all people and champion the cause of the oppressed and stand up to oppressors. Uh, right now, the, the oppressors is the liberal left-wing news media, uh, other systems of control, and uh, these digital platforms which try to silence and control people and deny us our rights. The Constitution says we're endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, and there are people that want to take these away and oppress us. But we preach love, compassion, mercy. But we also teach and preach about the person of Jesus Christ, who is the eternal Son of God, who died on the cross for you so that you can have salvation up from your sins and eternal life. This is what St. Jude Thaddeus taught. And in, in upcoming lessons, we're gonna, it's amazing to me how much literature about or attributed to St. Jude Thaddeus has survived. As I mentioned, we have the liturgy of St. Saint, uh, Saint Adai, or Mar Adai and Mar Marai, and we also have the doctrine of Adai, and there's other writings that came down to us uh, about these people who were chosen by Jesus Christ and sent forth. And they have a, a message that's important for us, a message that's relevant for today, and a lesson that we need to, to, hear, to hear and listen to and obey, uh, that we need to confess our sins, recognize our own limitations and adequacy, and accept the grace of God into our hearts so we can have forgiveness of sins and uh, know God as Father. That's the whole reason why Jesus came, so that he'd die for our sins, and that through trusting in him and his message, we can know God as our Father who art in heaven. So continue, I hope you stay tuned to other programs as we go forward uh, the rest of the month to look into the life and teachings of St. Jude Thaddeus, the Apostle of Jesus Christ and the Apostle to the Assyrians. Thaddeus, this is Marai. You are to go with him to fulfill the promise that our Lord made to King Abgar of Edessa. You will go to him, present him with the holy shroud for safekeeping, and heal him of his infirmity. Marai will be your guide. I must stay here and finish my work before I begin my mission in India. Nathaniel and I will join you in Edessa on our way. Goodbye, Thomas. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, Thaddeus. Do not fret. You will see me again.
Behold the gates of Edessa. We are now in Beth Narain, the ancient Assyrian homeland. Finally. Let us find my friend Tobias. 